Hello, everyone, and welcome to a little bit different set lusting Bruce. Uh, today is the 14th anniversary of the 9 11 attacks, and for many people, especially as Bruce Buds, um, Bruce, the Rising album, and the band is very tied up into 9 11. So to join me today is one of my best Bruce Buds, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Jesse. How are you? I am great. I um, It's always a good time to talk Bruce, and I always love talking Bruce to you. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, let's start out with, um, can you give me your memories of 9-11? Uh, sure. I mean, I think I, I always, I'll always remember the night before Monday night, um, you know, it was beautiful in Chicago and I had taken my niece who was about 14 at the time to a Cubs game. And then my niece and nephew had spent the night at my parents' house as had I. And so I just remember in the morning, my mother, my nephew was probably about eight at the time. And I just remember being downstairs and my mom saying, oh, there's a building on fire in New York and put it on the TV for Christopher to watch. And, um, and then obviously things took a very scary turn because he was watching that all live. So sometimes I think about that and like, what does he remember from that? Probably should ask him about that. And then I think the thing I remember the most is how things just changed so quickly. I remember I live pretty close to O'Hare Airport because I live in Chicago. And I remember sitting out on my porch on Tuesday night and just hearing silence, which is something you just don't hear. Where I live, you just hear constant planes. And um, and how much everything had changed, but I don't think we realized at that moment just how much everything would change. Yeah, I my sim- memories are very similar to yours. I had... And I say this with a little irony. Uh, at the time, I had talked to my wife um, about getting an upgraded resume. Um, I had been with the company at that time about 10 or 11 years, and um, headhunters were calling me all the time. Hey, do you have a resume, a resume? And so I had gone to a professional resume writer, and I don't remember. But it was, you know, a couple hundred dollars, and – um, I was scheduled to pick it up on Tuesday, 9-11. And in fact, for the longest time, that file of my professional resume had the date 9-11-2001 on it. Um, yeah. And so um, I had I was running early, so I stopped at an Einstein's Bagels, got a cup of coffee and a bagel, and I was in my car, and I was listening to the sports station – here in Dallas, um, 1310, the ticket, and they talked about, wow, there's some kind of, you know, on the radio, there's something happening in New York, and uh, wow, there's smoke, wow, a small plane must have accidentally hit that, and then, you know, I heard them say, oh my goodness, that's not an accident, you know, when the second tower was hit, and um, so I, I show up at this, and the resume writer worked out of a home, and so they had the TV on and we're just staring at it um, and just kind of this weird what's going on. And then I live next to the Dallas-Fort Worth air- airport. And so it's very similar when we sit on our porch. You know, we hear planes all the time, just constantly. And my dry cleaner is around the corner and he was telling me, he says, you know, I'm looking up in the sky And there's dozens, if not hundreds, of planes circling. And um, there's six runways in DFW, and you could just watch six planes landing at a time. Six planes landing at a time. And so it was very surreal. Um, uh, President, uh, Former President Bush was on that same radio station yesterday promoting uh, the 30 for 30 um, and a golf tournament that he's a charity golf tournament where they talk about that first pitch, you know, at the World Series that he mm. threw. And, uh, you know, they asked him, was it all a blur? And do you remember? He goes, no, I remember a lot of things. I remember coming into a dead Washington, you know, eerily quiet Washington, D.C. with the Pentagon still smoldering, you know, and no action. He says, and I called my parents and my 
my mom's like they're in I, and I can't remember the city now and he says what are you doing there she says because you've grounded all the planes we're stuck <laughs> yeah we're stuck which I thought was really funny because you know um it's a former president but um it, it was impressive to me I thought how quickly they did ground everything and and how well they responded so yeah definitely a lot changed and a very weird my wife had started a new job and they were at the world trademark in dallas texas and they evacuated them um she had to go home and she was supposed to fly um that next week to new york for training and uh of course it got canceled and uh so very very bizarre um which I, I, yeah go ahead well i was gonna say i the next my cousin simone um from ireland was actually here visiting and, uh, so, you know, her flight was canceled cause I think she was supposed to leave on Wednesday. So she wasn't able to go home. So I, I wasn't working at the time. I, I was in between. Jobs. And I remember, um, I'm not exactly sure, like kind of how it came up. I think she just kind of wanted to go downtown and like, you know, she'd been downtown before, but when you think about, we're so used to big buildings and hundred story buildings and, yeah. um, so she just kind of couldn't wrap her mind around it. So her and I went downtown. We took the train downtown. Everything was closed. All the all the businesses downtown were closed because, you know, no one still knew kind of what was going on in those first 48 hours. And I remember being downtown and there was literally not a person on the street. It was just, it was a ghost town. And it was kind of, I mean, it, it was very eerie. And um, there were like maybe three other people that we ran into the entire time we were down there at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday which is just unheard of. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, just very, very bizarre. I, um, you know, we had the TV on at, I was working at real page for the time and, uh, we just, we were there and, you know, we had the TV on and we're trying to figure out what's going on. And it was a very, very, uh, surreal time and a really odd time. So, um, we did not. We went to um, New York that December because uh, at the time Linda's company was small enough that they had three offices. They had an office in um, Cleveland, they had an office in New York, and they had just opened the office in Dallas. And Dallas only consisted of Linda and two partners. And they said, so for your Christmas party or your holiday party, you can either go to Chicago or you can go to New York. And, um, so Lynn and I had never been to New York, so we flew in, um, every December, you know, 2001 and, um, we did not make it all the way down to ground zero, but we, we talked to a lot of people, uh, about how weird it was not seeing the towers that you could always, it was almost a compass in New York. You could look and go, okay, this is where I am based on, you know, the position of where those are. Um, so, uh, very bizarre, very strange. And I've talked in the past that, you know, I was a casual Bruce fan, uh, nothing major. I, I, I vaguely remember him releasing those two albums, you know, Lucky Town and Human Touch, but I don't think I bought either one. Um, you know, just kind of there. And then something amazing happened. You turn on that following Friday, America, a tribute to heroes, and it opens with a harmonica and Bruce saying a prayer for our fallen brothers and sisters. And you hear voices, my city of ruins, and I was captivated. Uh, We're going to have a link to this and I'll tweet out. I'm sure a lot of people will. Do you remember seeing that? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. And, And just sobbing. Yes. Just thinking just it was he was sort of the voice you were waiting to hear from a yes. little bit because because of it being New York, New York and New Jersey and um, and knowing his just he writes so many songs about the people who live there um, of all different kinds of people, you know, firefighters, yep. policemen, people who go to work every day, people who work in businesses every day. So he was kind of the voice you sort of were looking to hear that it was going to be okay. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's an odd thing at the time, my, um, brother-in-law Clayton, 
um, was a firefighter. He's since retired, but in our mind, it was just it was just the job. He he worked at um, a pretty uh, nice suburb of Dallas, uh, Allen, Texas, and so the job to us was just him telling funny stories about people calling in, you know, from medical problems. Um, you know that the lady was hearing a, an alarm, and they turned out it was the uh, low battery alert on her um, sensor, meat sensor, you know, like a battery prong that you can put in the meat to tell you if it's, you know, rare, medium, well done. Um, and, you know, the argument back and forth uh, about, you know, why do you got to do, if there's if there's four lanes, why do you take all three of them when there's an accident and make traffic go down to one? And he'd always say, as crappy as people drive you're lucky i give you one lane because (laughs) if i you know if i didn't give you if i just took one or two there's a better chance of one of my firefighters getting hit by your car because you're not paying attention exactly you know and so there was always this joke and all of a sudden you realized wow you know he has a dangerous job it it never had connected with me um it was just you know clayton was a firefighter and and it was he started as a paramedic and worked his way up and he was at the time a captain of a de- the department and um you know when i talked to him there it's there's some specialness there you know as i joke on you know saturday night live always you know i have a brother on the job you know so i always go my brother-in-law's on the job in allen when i'd saw a firefighter and they'd laugh and you know and say oh really Um, so yeah, it was, um, very bizarre and I did feel the sense of wonderment on that song and I'm like, man, I, I, this is great. And so when the rising came out and, um, according to Wikipedia, I knew it came out in 2002, but, um, you know, it, it came out fairly early. Uh, no, I guess in July, I keep thinking it's early, but July, 2002, And uh, I remember picking up immediately and, you know, liked what I've heard. So, Colleen, how about you? Any memories of the uh, album? Yeah, I I definitely remember when it first came out. I remember actually going um, back then, you know, you still went to record stores and um, bought CDs. And uh, so I definitely remember going and getting it and just probably devouring it for just weeks and just listening to it and and like just using it to help sort of process all of these feelings and thoughts that we had because you know still even in the weeks after like no one really knew what was going to happen and um you just knew that things had really changed forever yeah uh so yes i absolutely remember it coming out and i remember just thinking that it was um pretty perfect <laughs> yes and yeah and and i i suppose um You know, the rumor is um, supposedly a stranger in a car stopped next to him, rolled down his window and said, we need you. Um, You know, and and this was, you know, the band had already gotten together. Right. And had recorded um, a couple of tracks for the greatest hits. And they had their um, reunion tour uh, during 2000. So it isn't like this got the band back together, but it was, you know, they were connected already. And, um, you know, according things, this is his first studio album in seven years. It was the first E Street band in 18 years. And um, in a little special note for me, that was the first show I saw in November 2002, you know, here in Dallas was the Rising Tour. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so and, you know, it's still I love um, the DVD of uh them you know doing it uh you know the different the one in europe right i'm I'm drawing a blank on the city but um it was really good and barcelona yeah barcelona yes thank you and you know it's great seeing that tour and so there is um as much as this is a based on a sad argument there's also as always joy in bruce's music and a lot of good memories so uh, what we thought we'd do is Colleen and I are going to kind of go through the album track by track, kind of discuss things, and uh, we hope that you guys will um, enjoy it, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts. Um, 
I I did send out the request, you know, if anyone had any thoughts. So as we're talking, I'm going to be checking Twitter and just seeing. So I may give you a random, hey, Colleen, somebody said this. So um, and uh, so we'll go from there. Um, so we start out with Lonesome Day. Thoughts? Um, I really like this song. And I think that it's a um, I think it was a good it was a good first song for for the album. I mean, yeah. Do you kind of agree that it was like kind oh, of a yeah. Good thing? I mean, in a lot of ways, it was um, a perfect, you know, song to start out with. I, I love the kind of slow beginning and then the full band coming in, you know, makes it um, amazing. Um, yeah, I, I think it is. Um, it starts the album off really well. Um, it it. It certainly is something that, you know, sets the tone on, um, you know, the loss and everything. So and and I think we've all gone through lonesome days. And um, how do you get through this? Right. Yeah. And I also think, though, what what I think I really liked about it sort of leading it off, because what the album to me sort of has is, I mean, obviously it's sad because it even though some of the songs were written before 9-11 and sort of maybe repurposed or, you know, just fit perfectly with sort of the theme. I mean, so there's a sadness about this album and there's, it's certainly filled with despair and loneliness, but I also feel like there's, um, there's a lot of hope in it. And there's a lot of um, like, we can see, you know, I think in some of the songs you'll see, like there's, there's a light ahead and, you know, we can find it. And I think that one of the, the biggest themes is there's no ever sort of, angriness or bitterness or revenge theme and it's sort of about like let's find a way to move forward not backward and and i think that that's kind of like how this song sort of kicks it off like to me like it just doesn't have it it just has a even though it's yes it's lonesome day but it has like a hopefulness to it yeah and i think almost all these songs do and and um if i forgive us if we are um a little bit redundant, but I think it's important because, you know, there are times when people will tell me, oh, Bruce is just so depressing. And, and I go, well, I'm not going to say he doesn't have some pretty sad songs, but at the same time, I think there is a underlying feeling of hope and uh, optimism that, you know, I'm going to get out of these badlands, you know, and, and this stuff. So I agree. Yeah. Um, and I think there's, even, there, there's a line in there, um, you know, like ask questions before you shoot. Yes. And um, deceit and betrayal is bitter for, so like it, it's sort of, I mean, not to get too political, but it's sort of poignant with the way we, we did sort of handle it and maybe didn't ask enough questions. Right. And, I mean, so no. it's a little bit, it was a little bit, uh, Madame Marie. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it is, it is hard not to get political and regardless of which side of the aisle you're on, uh, because everything does become politically. And, you know, one of the beautiful things about after nine 11 was how almost everyone on the, you know, the country joined together pulling for things. I mean, Good gosh, we almost pulled for the Yankees. And I mean, let's just that's just crazy. <laughs> right. And 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 I, I say that tongue in cheek as a Texas Ranger fan, you know, um, you know, and it was just kind of interesting and to see. Um, so then we go into the fire, which is one of my favorite songs. Uh, I love the and I think Bruce does a really good job of using repeating lyrics to help make a point and this song is almost you know a, a, a mantra you know may your strength give us strength may your faith give us faith may your hope give us hope may your love give us love and um i could actually see you know meditating to that with prayer beads or a rosary or you know, uh, flat Bruce, you know, just this kind of mm -hmm. giving yourself into the thought of, you know, giving strength and faith, hope and love, um, just truly, truly wonderful. A absolutely. Um, completely agree. Uh, I, I think that, you know, especially kind of the way the, the song sort of, 
at the end, you know, there's so much despair of the loss that was experienced. Um, but so many stories. And I mean, obviously the firefighters and the police department, like the stories of the bravery are unparalleled, but there were also stories of bravery and courage and unparalleled kindness by just people who worked in those buildings who refused to leave friends who couldn't get down. Yes. Probably could have got down on their own. Um, but they stayed behind because they didn't want to leave somebody behind. Um, people who never signed up for that kind of job, you know, they were stock workers or secretaries or, or what be you. Um, so I think that, um, that, that sort of the, the bravery and selflessness of so many people is what helped so many people move forward. Yeah. And it's a cliche at times, um, when, and, and I don't, I mean this by no offense, which means I'm going to offend people, right? Anytime you say, I mean no offense. But, you know, it's a very quick thing to say when a sports figure dies or um, a celebrity dies. And, you know, they'll say, well, God just needed a starting pitcher. So they took him, you know, or Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it is truly someone trying to process. And so I'm. I'm mocking the cliche of this, not the the thought behind it, not the sentiment. And, you know, to say, because he takes that and he says, you know, I need your kiss, but love and duty called you someplace higher, somewhere up their stairs into the fire. He's saying, well, God needed a firefighter but, you know, or whatever, you know, the volunteer. But he's saying it in such a way that is so Bruce, right? Right. And, and even... Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and it's okay, you know, if, if I'm saying something, you know, silly, please call me out on it. Uh, it is just such, um, and, you know, he's got his twang voice kind of going on it. And uh, I mean, side note, I think his voice on this album was probably better than it had been in maybe since Tunnel of Love. Like it was, it was exceptional. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So then we come just, just a fangirl for a moment. No, no, always. <laughs> so then we come to uh which I think is a absolutely wonderful song that many Bruce fans have now turned on. Oh no, the controversy song. Yes. Um Waiting on a Sunny Day. And if you're listening to this podcast, you should know the story, but if in some case you're just found this through because you're searching for people talking about 9-11 or you're one of my Castle or Doctor Who fans or you went, hey, there's a Cubs fan. Maybe they're going to talk about the Cubs. <laughs> um, and on total side note, Colleen and I are pulling for a Texas Rangers Chicago Cubs World Series oh, with Bruce singing <laughs> you know, the seventh please. inning scratch. And we could either one be just we'd be cheering for the other team to win because we knew i mean we'd be selfishly for our team but we deep of our heart boy but if the cubs win colleen would be so happy and at least it would be a fellow bruce fan getting a dream so anyway that's how i feel (laughs) yeah so waiting on a sunny day i've always liked the song i'm just gonna go on the record i i think it's um unlike the wrestler where it says i'm a one dog if you ever seen a dog with one leg, you know, and I go, you can't walk with one leg. That makes no sense. You know, th- waiting on a sunny day has, you know, I'm a drummer who can't keep a beat. And and I just like waiting on a sunny day. It doesn't bother me that Bruce has kids come up and sing it. I, I'm bothered by the parents who force their kid up, who doesn't know the lyrics. And, and, you know, I hate that part of it, but I, when a kid loves what they're doing and when the kid says, hit it, B Street Band, I cheer and smile. Yes. Um, so tell me I'm wrong, Colleen. I can't. Okay. <laughs> I can't. As somebody who has seen her fair share of Bruce shows, especially in the last four years, mm-hmm. um, or three and a half, uh, I, I've seen close to 30 shows, um, in all over. Uh, I have two feelings about waiting on Sunday. I actually like it. I think Bruce loves the kids and I see the joy in him when he brings them up there and they're great. Or even when they're like a little bit shy, but still sort of into it. Right. I agree that I, the, the parents who put their kids on their shoulders and thrust themselves to the front 
especially when you're in the pit, it is very upsetting because yeah. you can tell a lot of times the kids don't want it. Right. Um, and you have to be respectful to the other fans around you. I mean, we'll make room for you and we'll help you get up there if, you know, but just sort of do it the right way kind of thing. Yes. Um, but I, I, I personally love the song, but when he plays it live, you know, it's the end of the main set. Yes. So it does have a, it does have a sense of sadness to it. Cause you know, like two thirds of it is over and you're right. coming down to the last hour, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yes. So now, like, the Pavlovian response in your brain right. oh. this song is playing. That means we've only got this many more songs right. to go. Um, but I think it's joyful. And I, like I said, I think the band enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw him in Detroit with a with a kid. It was a young, it was a young kid, a young boy. And they did the knee slide together, oh. um, which was fantastic. Yes. Um, in Nashville, we saw him. And he pulled up a kid with a Blackhawks jersey, which yes. was a no, no. And that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and Melissa who side note, Melissa uh, Nielsen is one of my best friends. We work together and we, um, we both feel, and we are going to get you to on a future uh, episode of uh, Set Less Thing, and we're going to talk about Flat Bruce's adventures. And, awesome. Yeah, because you guys have so many great stories. We do. And uh, and one of them is we went on this tier of about, I think, maybe eight or nine shows in a row mm-hmm. where people we had met in line before mm-hmm. the concert got pulled up on stage either to sing waiting on a sunny day or dance it with it with him during dancing in the dark. So we kind of felt like we became these good luck charms, but we weren't, yeah. really, weren't really sure why the luck wasn't shining on us. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you. I, I understand that, that diehard fans, you know, don't like it, but you know what? Everybody needs a time to go to the bathroom. So yeah. So take it. And I personally, I really, really enjoy it. Yeah. And I, I think this, and then when he gets the young people up to do dancing in the dark and, you know, at the Dallas show, he really interacted with a lot of the young people on the show and, and Nashville, you know, the young girl, you know, wanting to hear satisfaction. And, um, of course I, I thought of my friend, um, Eddie said, and, you know, if you brought your kid to a Bruce show, he, um, he or she would not be holding up a, a sign that had somebody else's song on it. <laughs> Though you and I both have been on the record. We love when they do the covers and, and it's so much fun, you know, on a, and boy, there's so many side notes on this, but, you know, I don't, I don't do the math. Like my friend Sam says, you know, when he does Born to Run, I've lost another song that I wanted to hear. Like, um, you know, Thundercrack Mm -hmm. or, you know. um, Or an incident. Yes, or something like that. And I go, but I still love hearing Born to Run. I mean, I don't, I, I, the only time it was at Houston, he was going to do, oh, I don't remember which one, but he was going to do something off high hopes like uh frankie fell in love and instead he opened with seeds because it's got the word houston in it had a little disappointment in there because i'm not a big seeds fan and i specifically saw you know that he scratched on the side you know i'm like oh that's a bad trade bruce (laughs) you know you got fleeced on that if you were a sports manager (laughs) um so i just kind of enjoy all of them so i don't look as waiting on a sunny day as well, if he'd got rid of that, he'd do something else. Um, well, yeah. and also, waiting yeah. on a sunny day is is a great. It's a good stadium song because y- it has a nice. You know, people can sing along with it. It's yes. it's an easy verse. It's an easy chorus, and people yeah. can can really get into it. And I get it. There are those of us who travel around the world and go to see Bruce ten times in yes. a month. There are people who get to see Bruce once in a lifetime. Yes. And and they may be from the casual fan yeah. to, who has had heard hears him on the radio once in a while to a really good fan who has never got to see him live. Right. I think they probably want to see Borner run live. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do. And you know, I I go back to uh, Linda Ronstadt that was on Johnny Carson once, and they started talking about um, she was a little bit tired of doing Blue Bayou and uh, Poor Poor Pitiful Me, and then she said, "But I went and saw Frank Sinatra." She goes, and I wanted to hear every one of those songs. Yes. And so so I keep that in my mind that um, it is a common statement that 
everyone's comic book is someone's first comic book. So you need to, when you're writing a comic book, and you know, I just came from a Dragon Con, so it's a, I'm very comic book thinking on my mind. You need to write your book in a way that it's accessible to everyone. Well, every Bruce show is someone's first Bruce show. Exactly. And so there are check marks that you want them to do. Um, the other th- point is I think Bruce is so ready for grandkids. <laughs> I just think, I just think he, totally. I just because he loves, he seems to get such joy interacting with the kids and they, um, he really does. And he, and I think he is even good enough to realize when he gets a kid that has sort of been thrust upon there, Yeah, and he'll just sort of do a little bit of the song and then pick them up and throw them back in the audience. Yes. Um, but when he has a kid up there who's sort of really embracing the moment, yes. he takes them all around the stage. Yes. You know, he does the knee slide with them. He does yep. he takes them to one side of the stage to the other. So he's really good at reading the situation as well. Yes. And, and knowing what to do with it. Yeah, and I love Susie's violin. Well, I, I love the, you know the I mean, beginning is amazing. I, I was a little sad she wasn't included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, group. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, others, not so much, but hers, I, cause she's actually been part of the band unofficially and officially for a long time. And I think as much as you could say, does a rock and roll band need a fiddle? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Especially when that rock and roll band is the E Street Band. Yes, it does. It is like an orchestra. And the last thing I'll say about Waiting on a Sunny Day, I love in the live, when you see him live, or even when you just, you know, spend eight hours watching Mm -hmm. videos, as I've been known to do, um, at the end of the, like, second verse or second chorus, the second time he does the chorus, and he throws the guitar, that's, it's like one of my favorite moments. I could literally just watch that like a vine. (laughs) Yeah, it. I, I totally agree. You know, and and there are reasons why things become touchstones, and and so I totally agree with you. Um, yay. Okay, so then we bring it back to Nothing Man, um, a very low key, um, in in, in a sad song, um, and and I will tell you, I I know you shared with me yesterday that you were going to go through the album beginning to end. Um, and I usually do on 9-11, that's one of the things I do, is I kind of listen that and kind of think about life um, on, a, on a less cheery note. Um, the 10th anniversary of 9-11 is the day that my father died. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, so 9-11 has a double whammy for me is it's very easy to remember oh yeah it's the fourth this is the fourth anniversary of my father's death plus 911 so you know i i listened to little johnny cash or willie nelson and i listened to bruce kind of honoring both uh so that's, that's lovely yes um so thoughts on nothing man um i think it's i get i agree it's very sad um It's we talked about how a lot of the songs have like sort of this dual sort of message. I don't really see the dual. I just see the sadness in this song. Yeah, I don't really see the 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 sort of light at the end. Like so many of the songs sort of take that turn like to positivity. Um, I just think this song is very very sad, and I think this song could have been written yesterday. Yeah, about soldiers coming home more than about. Um, more than about 9-11. You know, yes. this was obviously written before the the Iraqi invasion and, and all of the soldiers who have come back, you know, mm-hmm. so terribly traumatized, either physically and or mentally. And that's what this song means to me. When I hear this song and I hear the words and I, that, that's what connects to me. And it's like it yeah. was written yesterday. Absolutely. Um, then we move on to, have you seen Nothing Man Live? Um, I, I don't, I don't think I have, um, of course not, I haven't seen as many not, shows. Not recently. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Not recently. Yeah. Uh, so then we move on to counting on a miracle and, um, you know, I, I, I like it. I do not like the, um, kind of acoustical, uh, version that was on, um, I forgot which I think maybe, um, essential Bruce Springsteen. I'm, I'm I have to think on it, which one it was on, but, uh, okay. yeah, you know, where he kind of does the steel guitar and such. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like it, but I like the regular version. Um, 
and and I think we all are counting on a miracle sometimes. And I I do I, I love the it's a fairy tale so tragic. There's no prince to break the spell. I don't believe in magic, but for you I will. For you I will. Um, and and that's you know once again Bruce is talking about having faith. You know, fake it till you make it. And, and that's such a good way to put it because that would be kind of what I'd be struggling to say. Yes. Like, like I'm, I'm completely dead inside, but I know that I need to sort of figure out a way to come back. Yeah. So fake it like you make it until you are ready to make it. Yes. But have faith that one day you will. Yeah. And so um, it's really, really uh, good and uh, a nice point. And, um, and live your life to honor others. Yes. It is. And also, um, you know, and the double meaning is I'm counting on a miracle to renew my soul, to find a way for me to get through what I'm getting through, no matter what it is. And um, as you mentioned, there were, uh, you know, a lot of these songs were not necessarily, be, you know, 9-11. Some of them were written before. And... And so, you know, there is a beautifulness to this doing the double meanings, correct? Exactly. Yeah. And what they mean, the, the, the beauty of any song, not even a Bruce song, is it can mean something so different to me than it does to you and what it does to, you know, Susie on the street. It, we all get to take from it what we need. Yes. And I love that. Take what we need. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, it, it, I think though that um, I do. I it's one of my favorite songs on the um, yeah on the album. And then we move to "Empty Sky," which is one of my favorites. I just love this. So beautiful. Yeah, I, I you know I woke up this morning. I could just barely breathe. Just an empty impression in the bed where you used to be is so painful, and. And, you know, I woke up this morning to an empty sky, obviously talking about the missing the towers. But um, I think any time you lose someone, whether it's through them moving away, through a breakup, through a death, um, you know, as you guys know, I'm I'm in transition looking for a new work home. And so, you know, there are many mornings I wake up to an empty sky. And I am counting on a miracle. I mean, you know, I'm all these things that we're talking about are me, you know, searching for this next phase in my life. So and and I love the dynamic of I want a kiss from your lips. I want an eye for an eye. So in the same emotion, I want to feel comfort for you. And I am angry and I want revenge. Right. It, it's probably the only song on this that actually sort of has that d- very distinct, very. um purposeful eye for an eye yeah. sort of I mean literally. Yeah, and you know, and I think I think it's good that he acknowledges the anger and and then moves on. Um Yeah, I've actually been I um in June, Melissa, my friend Melissa and I, we actually were lucky enough to get tickets to the Daily Show. And uh Nice. Being being John's last um last summer, we knew we had to take them. Uh so we couldn't get a flight, so we ended up driving overnight because we got them at the last minute. So we drove from Chicago to New York overnight, and then on the way back, we wanted to um, we wanted to stop and get as close as we could to the Statue of Liberty to get some nice pictures. And um, so we had Googled a couple places of where to go, and one of them was the park in New Jersey. And we didn't even know when we went there that there was a 9-11 memorial there. Um, we just, we just stumbled upon it as we parked and we were walking around the, the park and it's beautiful. It's across the river and you can see all of lower Manhattan and you can see where the twin towers would have stood. And now where one tr- world trade center stands and the memorial there is actually called empty sky. Oh, I, wow. That's nice. Yeah. So it's, um, it has the 746, uh, people from New Jersey were killed in the mm-hmm. night attack. Yes. So all of their names are on this memorial and I'm, I'm going to screw it up. I should have looked it up knowing that we were going to talk about it, but the, <laughs> the memorial is two sort of walls that are the same dimensions scale down of, oh. of the world trade centers. 
and they're pointing to where the World Trade Centers would have stood. Oh, nice. And they have all of the names of the 746 people who were killed etched into the walls. It's it's a beautiful memorial. Oh, I'm sure that was so touching. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and obviously they named it after Bruce's Yes. Song. So, Worlds Apart... Um, don't have a lot of strong feelings one way or another about the song. So how about you? Um, you know, I, I, you kind of don't want to take things too literally. Yeah. Sometimes you want to, you want to sort of be above that, if you will, um, more highbrow. Yeah. Uh, But I think when you look at it, you can really look at it as, again, sort of that let's take a step back and sort of, if we can all just accept each other, these things can stop happening. You know, Absolutely. even references Allah instead of God in the song, right? I think is important. Um, and sort of you have these two people, and if both sides just learn to, you know, live together, or it's not going to change. Like we can talk about this forever, but if we don't learn to address the real reasons why it happened or the real segregation of all the people in this world, then it's just probably going to happen again. Absolutely. Um, then we move on to Let's Be Friends, Skin to Skin. Very upbeat song. Um, this is a lot of different meetings. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, this is a very, I don't want to use casual, but it is, you know, an upbeat and it's not as light. And um, so you can definitely take this two different ways of, you know, where he's kind of talking to a young lady or a friend, or if you carry it on a heavier thing, you know, between people from different worlds and countries. So um, any thoughts on that? Um, I, I thought this song maybe fit the least. Okay, I could see that. And just listening to them, I listened to it twice in the last 12 hours. Yes. Um, so it just sort of, um, yeah, it just, to me, it just didn't, it didn't click with me as some of the yeah. other songs where I, it was so easy to pull themes and thoughts yeah. and, you know, sort of how it fits in together. Yeah. This, I think it's, it's sort of along the same themes as Worlds Apart, but it's yeah. a little less powerful. Right. Um, and my friend it, Sam, it, go it, ahead. I watch a lot of Padre Runway, so I'm yeah. going to say this was a fashion collection. I would say there's no cohesion. Right. And, you know, my friend Sam says, um... He thinks at times, you know, um, like he thinks there are a couple of songs, and I won't try to name which ones, that would have made this a stronger album. You know, and, and I think, um, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I, I Now, I always am, you know, I don't know, think it just as an album. I think, like, I, once again... I'm going to th- I want every song that Bruce wants to do live. I want to do it. And I'm I'm going to keep listening as long as he wants to keep playing. So it doesn't bother me um because I can always hit skip on the uh, player or the DVD and so I'm okay with that. Now, further up on the road is something that he's really taken up to and 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 I love the session spans version of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and it is, um, I I love that, you know, where the way dark and the night is cold, one Sunday morning will rise, I know, and I'll meet you further up on the road, is just really, I mean, I like this song a lot. Me too. Um, And and so... um, I love the melody of it, aside from the lyrics. Right. I, I just, there's something about the melody, sort of, it just... You can almost imagine the lyrics, of, even if you didn't know them, just yeah. the rise and fall of the song. Yeah. And there is, you know, you talked about uh, John Stewart, you know, and he, you know, talked about um, Bruce in his um, kind of final closing, you know, that he thinks of Bruce's career, you know, Bruce thinks his career is a conversation with his audience. And John Stewart says, I love that. And, So I'm just going to go get something to drink and I'll see you later. But he could have just as easily said, I will see the you further on up the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is a hopeness to it. And um, I 100 percent agree with that. It's like I'm really in a dark place right now. Yeah. But I know that this isn't permanent. Yes. And and so, you know, just wait for me. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Yes. I just need time. Yes. And that's fair. It is. So then we get down to the fuse. Um, a little dark for me, 
Um, I, I'm. It's kind of sexual. Yes. Yes. I mean, not that most a lot of his songs aren't, but it's yeah. overly so. Yes. Um. All right. Now I'm. Now I'm kind of. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> should we do? You want to expand on that, Colleen, or do we move on? Um. I don't. I mean, I don't know how I if if I could. I mean, okay. I just. I mean, I feel like obviously there's the imagery of a funeral. Yeah. And sort of maybe the I don't know. I mean, sometimes I you you kind of want to hesitate before you start reading way too much into something, but like maybe it's a funeral and people who sort of are faced with people who have died obviously very suddenly, very unexpectedly. Um, no one thought on that Tuesday morning that, you know, yeah. three thousand people weren't coming home to mm-hmm. their lives. Um and sort of just even though you've had this incredibly sad sort of funeral day, you mm-hmm. also just need to stay really passionate and, you know, really embrace the people that you still have. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Andrew Greeley, um, a um, novelist, you, I feel like I learned Chicago. Um, he died a few years ago, but had had a whole series of novels set in um, the Chicago area and you know he talked about that in a lot of ways you know the in the ancient um ireland tradition of you know couples would have sex after the wakes as a way of saying f you death you know to embrace life mm-hmm. and so yeah I, I definitely see that going on and uh something pretty special um so then we get to uh, mary's place and this is one of my favorite songs, and and um, I did not know that um, it was directly inspired by Sam Cooke's "Meet Me at Mary's Place." Um, Google that, listeners, and listen, and you'll go, "Wow, it sure is." <laughs> um, uh-huh. I grew up on a dairy farm, and um, to kind of do some cross pollinization, um, I just recently um, did a Doctor Who podcast where uh, it was a Tom Baker city of death. And the plot was that um, an alien had been splintered all over time. And he convinced um, Da Vinci to like paint seven copies of the Mona Lisa so that they could steal the Mona Lisa and then sell the seven copies. And everyone would think they owned the original Mona Lisa. And it would be because it was from, you know, Da Vinci. Mm-hmm. And so the question I asked, um, Wendy Himbrock, who does tuning into sci-fi TV and, um, you know, and Charles Skaggs who co-hosts with me, where would you go? And, um, without talking, Wendy talked about, I grew up, you know, I had, my cousins had a farm and we would spend summers there and it would be absolutely, you know, beautiful being at the hay barn and going out in the fields and, you know, visiting. And I said, that's odd because I, my grandparents had a dairy farm in rural Louisiana. And I, every time I hear Mary's place, I think of them out on the back porch with, uh, music in the background and they're shelling peas. <laughs> and they're telling stories and they're talking or shucking corn, you know, because, you know, they had a huge, I mean, there would be five wash tubs of peas that need to be shelled so that you uh-huh. could, you know, can them or freeze them. And, and that feeling of joy and the family, I always think of when I see at Mary's place. Um, I, I think it's a live, um, I, I know one critic said he didn't care for the show till he watched it live the long for this didn't care for the song but then when he heard it live he went wow what a great way to introduce the band and talk about it so um i'm on the record i really love meet me at Mar- you know mary's place i i i really enjoy it it is one of those songs that i probably enjoy live more yes or a live version of it more right um and and yeah i think it's i think it's sort of all about like you said it's about celebrating life um Yes, you need to mourn those that you've lost, but, and I still think he's a little bit unsure of how to do that. Yes. So I think the music is maybe a little bit peppier than the message. Yeah. Which is a nice contradiction. Um, but and, yeah, I think, I think it's yeah. all about mourning, but and, by celebration. You know, and he does that a lot. Um, you know, as we talk about, um, you know, we haven't discussed Born in the USA too much, but you know, as Dave Marsh talks about, you know, there's a reason why he made this an anthem. You know, he was trying to do something. He was trying to tell some message because he could have made this a lot 
you know, slower paced or something. But he chose for this to have this huge, you know, born in the USA, you know, which count kind of countermands, you know, the lyric and story he's trying to tell. So uh, very interesting. Yeah, agreed. And uh, I do remember, um, you know, in The Rising, he did it um, live and it's on my wish list again. I would like to see him do that live again, especially with the newest band, you know, with all the different horns and everything. I think that would be a really great uh, live show, you know. Agreed. Yeah. And any show, would, any live show would be great. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We'll take anything right now. We are. Yes. Um, So then we move to um, You're Missing. Go ahead. So sad. It is sad. Um, It is. I don't even know if I could talk about it without crying. Yeah. Um, I'll try. Yeah. It, well, it's, you know. I, I think the reason for me why it's so sad is yeah. because it's sort of like you're missing. It's not you're gone. It's not you're dead. It's not you're, you know, you left. It's you're just missing. And so many people were missing. Yes. And, and then not knowing. And, and the simpleness of sort of like these day-to-day things that he talks about in the song, like, um, you know, like your clothes are still here, your, your, your jackets where you left it, your, right. you know, all the things for like when you were supposed to just come home at five 30 mm-hmm. and, and you didn't. And, and you're not, and I don't even know if you're dead. Like, I don't know where you are, you know, cause I'm sure every single person held on to some sort of hope for days that yes. they, they had gotten out, that they had amnesia, that they were unconscious, that they were, you know, they just were just lost somewhere and they were going to find them. I mean, I can't see how anybody wasn't just hold, trying to hold on to that hope. Uh, you know, Colleen, I uh, we've talked about this and I said, I think I would be someone um, that would, till I saw Linda's body, I would think that she's going to come home. You know, um, you know, hey, I, I still want to believe that Elvis is out there somewhere, uh, right. you know, so especially, you know, and, I, and it is a great image where coffee cups on the counter, jackets on the chair, papers on the doorstep, you're not there. And it give it paints such a picture of, you know, it was just a normal morning. And all of a sudden you had to go and you didn't have time to grab the paper and throw it inside. You didn't have time to put your coffee cup in the dishwasher in the sink. You know, you just went. And oh, just just absolutely beautiful. And and I even love how it just, you know, everything is everything. Like yes. it, he does talk about like these little certain things. And then it's like I could go on forever yeah. because everything is still everything and nothing has changed except for you aren't where you're supposed to be. Right. And I talk a lot about um, I, I have um, I have lost um but my both sets of grandparents, but especially on my mom's side, I was close to them very much. And then um, we've lost um, Linda's parents. And I, in fact, I often talk about I had five dads. I had my grandfather, I had my birth father, my stepfather, and then um, Linda's dad. So four dads. And, um, and, they're gone. And, and we talk about it's a new normal. It, you know, nothing will go back to what it was before, right. but there's a new normal. And it is, um, I think someone talked about this in a book or something that, you know, you're, you're driving around and everyone's acting like it's nothing has changed. And you're, you know, your heart is broken because you've lost your parent or you've lost the spouse and um, very, very powerful. Yeah, just how do you move on from being paralyzed? Absolutely. Um, so then we move to The Rising, which is, believe it or not, um, I have seen, when I, I did a count of all the songs I've seen in shows and did a spreadsheet, and The Rising is the song I've heard him perform live the most. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, it is um, it, it is a powerful song. Um, and I... I certainly think that, you know, especially the first lyric is, you know, very much about, you know, I've got my back on my backs, a 60 pound stone, you know, on my shoulder, a half mile line, you know, um, I'm climbing up, um, you know, and, and it's just a absolutely wonderful song. Yeah. I mean, very sort of 
again, a very literal take, I think, of firefighters yeah. running in and running up, mm-hmm. um, especially in that first verse. Yes. Um, and not even knowing how far they've, how far up they are, how far they have to go. Um, and unfortunately, you know, many of them would never even find out because they never probably got to up as far as they needed to go or obviously down as far as they needed to go. So mm-hmm. I think that's, um, I think it's really, really powerful and it's incredibly, um, it's incredibly sad. And as somebody who is not a firefighter, um, it, it, it's remarkable to think that there are people out there who do that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, wearing the cross on my calling and it is, you know, bells ringing, fill the air. Um, it is a great song live. Like I said, I've heard it many times and it is, um, though Sam asked, what is the rising come up for the rising of what? And I'm like, Oh, just go with it, Sam. (laughs) It can be anything you want. (laughs) Come up to, to the, I think the rising of so much of your yes. spirit of, of another building in its place of, you know, yes. of an, of a new life ahead for those who, who did get, you know, to survive. Yeah. I think, it, yeah, I agree. I think it, I think it means a lot of different things. You, you have to listen to it enough and decide what it means to you. Absolutely. And I love him telling the story and VH1 storytellers. You know, I think it's a, a great um, story talking about it. And so that's uh, very cool. Yeah. So then um, we move on to Paradise. Um, you know, I kind of, it it feels like it's placed wrong to me. Like, I think The Rising should have gone into My City of Ruins. And so this is another song, I think if I was editing, I may have pulled it out. So what's your thoughts? Um, I think I kind of agree with that. I think it's probably other than, um, the song we just talked about. I I think it was, I can't remember now. Oh my goodness. My brain is gone. Worlds Apart or? No, um. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. Yes. Um, it's, it's probably my second least favorite, um, song on the album. Um, one that I wouldn't sort of go back to put on my swim iPod, put on my, you know, iPod playlist for when I'm, you know, working out or whatever. Um, like every other song just gets, you know, looped in over and over. Uh, But I, I do think, you know, you can look at it a whole bunch of different ways. Um, you can take it very literally again, but I think you need to be very careful about that because yeah. you know the whole thing about like a crowded marketplace and mm-hmm. wires in my backpack. I mean, it, it sort of gives you a very, very specific image. Yes. And then we go to what we started with my city of ruins. Um, absolutely. A, a perfect way to end the album. Um, I, I can remember Colleen. I had, um, you know, I, I, I subscribe to Sirius XM and E Street Radio, and it really, if they offered a one channel subscription, that's what I would pay for because, I, I mean, not, I guess 98% of the times, every once in a while, I may, you know, switch over to something else. But, and the, the sad thing is, my car has a hard drive, um, you know, my system. So I have, you know, practically every Bruce song on the hard drive so I could build my own, you know, you know, E street, uh, state assist, you know, sound, you know, sound list checklist and play the songs, but I love E street and I, I love, uh, the different shows and the live shows and, you know, things. So, so anyway, it's, they're going to do the tour and Sirius is talking about doing the Apollo theater, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I got an online subscription And I didn't listen to it live because it was Friday night and my wife and I were doing things. And then um, they replayed it and I plugged in my earphones sitting in front of my computer. And when they did the city of ruins and when he says, are we missing anybody? I started to cry. Yes. Um, I just, and, and I love the idea and I hope I don't get it wrong. If you're here, and we're here, they're here. Exactly. And I, you know, when we're having a family get together, I always think of that. If you're here and we're here, they're here. Be it my grandparents, my father, you know, people who couldn't make the trip that are alive, but just couldn't be there for Thanksgiving or Christmas. 
and um, opening day, you know, whatever religious holiday you want to celebrate. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I'll celebrate something. <laughs> exactly. And there is just, it is such a sweet song, a sad song, but um, hope. And, you know, rise up, rise up. And, um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful live. Yes. Um, you just, you feel like the entire stadium gets smaller and you all kind of like just sort of pull together. Yes. And you, you want to, you know, you want to rise. Yeah. You want to do that together kind of thing. Um, you know, it's obviously can be tied to so many things. It can be tied to nine 11. It can be tied to so many cities in the country that are just suffering. So to like, like a Detroit or a Cleveland that are suffering from terrible, you know, the economic turn. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, I was in, um, we have friends in New Zealand mm-hmm. and I, my dad and I went to New Zealand a few years ago to visit them. And then we rented a car and we drove around all the North and South Island. And we were leaving the day we were leaving, we were in Christchurch and they had a massive 7.4 earthquake which, um, you know, was a terrifying thing to experience. And, um, our friends in New Zealand, uh, sent us like a DVD that had been put together, um, about what had happened in Christchurch and, you know, the devastation yeah. there it was terrible. No one even lives there anymore. And, um, and that's the song they used on the DVD. Oh, absolutely. So, so I think, you know, so many people have pulled it to sort of, because it fits so many different um, I know he's saying it after Sandy. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, it really just kind of fits and sort of like, yes, my city's in ruins, but, but, you know, I pray Lord with yes. these hands, like we can, we can do better. You know, and there's the Bible verse, um, faith without works is dead. And, and so Bruce is saying, you know, I, with these hands, I'm praying, I'm praying by my action and not just my thoughts and my memories and it's absolutely beautiful and yes it it feels like you're in the church of bruce and i don't mean that sacrilegious um i say that because you know all faiths um regardless of you know what deity you believe in or if you don't believe in a deity you know um you're praying for each other and the human race. And it is just something really beautiful. I, I really, really agree with that. And I think that, you know, like, well, like we said, it was written before nine 11. So yes. um, it, it is that just resounding theme. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, and then the album is over. Uh, so, um, it should be sad all over again. Yes, it is. Uh, so any final thoughts before Um, we kind of close it up? Yeah. I mean, just, I I think this is one of his strongest, uh, um, albums. I I really do think that, um, I, I love the story you told, like the, the folklore story of somebody rolled down their window and said, yeah, you know, we need you. And, and while it may or may not have happened exactly like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he heard all the people sitting in their living rooms or on their back porches listening to a silent sky, yeah. think, thinking it at least. Yes. Um, that we need you. So, uh, and to to be able to have so many of songs um, already sort of written that tie into sort of a theme of this was just, it's remarkable. Um, and I just really think that it shows how timeless Bruce's music is. Um, and how you can just really apply it to be sort of the soundtrack of your life. You know, it just, it can really reflect on all of these different moments. And I think it's really powerful. Yeah, I I do. And I also, I, there is so much, you know, this is amazing how much this is, so many songs have made the live shows and that he does this fairly often. And um, it is, ultimately um an album of healing and and you know it in a lot of ways it said you know Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band are back and they are still who you thought they were and and I think music has changed so much that you know he'll never be the you know icon of the 80s but he has accepted his role as a senior statesman of 
the gospel of rock and roll and um, is living his life and telling his music and you got to love it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I that made me think about the rising recently was um, Ted Cruz, who is running for president yes. of the United States. Uh, he was doing an interview and they were asking him about what kind of music he likes. And he said that now he only listens to country music because country musicians were really the only people who sort of um, were able to sort of address 9-11 in a way oh. that made sense to him or that was, mm-hmm. you know, like meaningful in any way. And I thought if I cared about you enough, I would send you a copy. Yes. Of Rising. Yeah. Um, but it, I- <laughs> not to stay off pol- politics, but yes, you now go, okay, you've kind of, um, yeah, you've kind of lost my vote. It's kind of like, uh, when, um, you know, I, I worked with a guy and my, um, my f- text alert is the, um, chirp that the enterprise, you know, the Star Trek communicator makes. And it chirped once in a meeting. He says, is that a bird? And someone said, wow, you just lost any chance of getting promoted. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying you have to cater to us Bruce fans, but, you know, get your facts straight. Uh, exactly. Chris, I mean, yes. or, yeah, I think, I think it was probably the best, not answer, because I don't think that's the right word, but I think it was the, it was the best um, compliment to the situation of, yes. of how to address it, because it wasn't sort of this, you know, hoo-ha, like, we're going to get everybody. It was more about understanding yeah. and, and, like, let's find a way to survive what has happened. Yeah. And maybe figure out a way that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, this uh, will put up, boot up their ass, um, you know, and, and that's fine. I mean, I think I, I did want to mention that at Girl True Heart, um, sent us both a note saying that the album became a set of prayers my mother and I could share, even though we were politically opposed in beliefs. And um, I think that is absolutely true. Um, and so thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh-huh. I loved I loved that comment uh, that Donna made. I, I thought it was yes. really, um, I thought it was pretty perfect. And it was, uh, it, it, it is a great way to show that how music, any music, not just Bruce music, yeah. can often be a connecting line. I, people have very different political um, ideas that I do who love Bruce. Sometimes I get completely confused by it. Yes. Um, but then, but then when you listen to them, if you actually take a, the time to listen to them, yes. you can, you try to understand and see where they're coming from right. as their different point of view. So to find any kind of common ground sometimes with somebody is really important, especially when something so big has happened and you want to be able to talk about it together without um, making it into anything angry, but more of understanding. And I think that's really, I thought that was really, really touching the way she said that. Yes, absolutely. So Colleen, um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for uh, if me. someone wants to reach you, uh, can you give us, um, a little contact information? Sure. I'm on Twitter. You can reach out to me at CM Cub fan. And this is our year. <laughs> Yes, um, I know that is the plan. Uh, I did want to say, uh, if you want to be on the podcast and talk about Bruce and all that implies, please send an email to setlustingbruce at gmail.com. We are also, we have a Set Lusting, Set Lusting Bruce Facebook page and at Set Lusting Bruce on Twitter. My personal Twitter is at Jesse Jackson DFW. Um, I we're hoping to do a lot more shows and discuss a lot more uh, Bruce because it's always a good time to uh, talk Bruce, right? It, oh, I mean, you think, oh, my, I hope I have enough to say. And then you're like, stop talking. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what, you know, we were like, OK, it's just kind of pull back the curtain. We're like, OK, we're going to go through this. We're, we'll try to, you know, let's try to get to an hour if we can. And so we're about hour 15 now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it's great. So I'm going to end this with um, with these hands. I pray, Lord, with these hands, I pray for the strength, Lord. I pray for the faith, Lord. We pray for your love, Lord. We pray for the lost, Lord. We pray for the world, Lord. We pray for the strength, Lord, with these hands. Um, Someone say amen, somebody. Thank you, guys. And I hope that you remember the, not only the sorrow, but the hopefulness 
that um, Bruce's music gives you. Bye!